mighty good, mighty good. I love barbecue. Barbecue TV. Right, I'm lost for words here, so we'll start. Okay, uh, hi there, folks. Um, this isn't so much proper goose as Irish propaganda. And uh, this year, we've decided, as the Wild Geese team, to do something quite different. Because it's 400 years ago, since the Wild Geese left Ireland in 1607, we've decided to celebrate it by cooking a goose. An idea that we thought was novel at the time. We didn't quite realise the vagaries of cooking a goose. It's very, very different. Obviously from Newfoundland, because it was still frozen, and we didn't realise that at the time. So we have uh, gave the goose uh, somewhat of a swim in a little bit of warm water, and about 6 o'clock this morning, me and the goose Very went different. into battle. We've decided to use traditional Irish uh, mixtures, and we're actually using mead, which is uh, a honey dish from Ireland. It's there we go. Well, it's funny how these things arrive in your hand. And particularly if you're at the Irish stall. So get to here before the rest of it is gone. This, in fact, is um, a special thing drank by the kings of Ireland. And it's made of honey. It comes from Bunratty, which is just on the road from me. And um, what, what the, uh, the, the lords and ladies used to do when they were getting married a month beforehand for virility, both parties partook of considerable mead. And that's where, afterwards, the word honeymoon comes from. So I've tried to honey this goose up, and let's go over and have a look at it. Um, Mark, at six o'clock this morning, myself and the goose went into battle. Now, any um, cook will tell you that in a conventional oven, when you put a goose on, it's slightly different from any other bird because it wants its own vengeance. It's made up of so much oil that that's the real problem with it, and it spits and ruins ovens. When you put it on a barbecue, however, it's something quite different. Because obviously, when it hits the coals, it's a highly volatile situation. So what could very quickly happen is, when it hits the coals, it takes off, it woofs. And like a moment, you have a goose on it, and you have a phoenix the next minute. So we're going to show you what we've done with it. We've ra I, early this morning, I put the temperature up at about 450, allowed the goose to discharge the, um, the oil that was coming from it, pricked it slowly right through the, the goose and onto the, the drip tray. We brought, we brought the, once we had it cooked, we, we filled it with the filling that we had prepared earlier, which is made of primarily of plums, tomatoes, a little bit of pineapple and some ginger and we put it into the goose, wrapped it tightly, more for our protection than for the goose's protection. So what you see now is a goose that's going to take a long time to cook. Um, we brought this, uh, the second part of this goose is once you've done the first phase, you've gone through, through the transition, you've got the, the goose wrapped up, we bring the temperature down on the coals to 250, at the bottom of the tin foil to allow the oil still, to, whatever is left, to, to go back into the drip tray while the other drip tray then has water in it in order to keep the overall temperature moist. Uh, I had to fight hard to get a space for my goose because Jerry the Rib was insistent on in putting his ribs in there once he had them sorted. So we'll just open this just for a peek and if the goose bites you, that's your problem. Hold on. Oh, there she goes. Sitting over here is our little friend. You can see it's just nicely moving away with you can actually see the the oils still dripping out of her and the goose must at this stage be on for the last two hours so gently taking the oils out while retaining the moisture the moisture will actually fill the rest of the is filling the cavity but also remaining within the environment mark i see um, this barbecue from two perspectives i've come here um both to cook but I also have come here with the eyes of a marketer. And uh, as you're aware, marketing, or at least uh, barbecuing, is only growing in Ireland and uh, throughout Europe as we become more and more aware of what's, uh, what's occurring. Now, I believe if we're going to move uh, barbecuing on, and Patrick O'Sullivan, more than anybody else, has done this in an Irish sense, we need to get people thinking and move them along a continuum of awareness, interest, desire, and action. In other words, people are starting to become aware that barbecuing is out there, becoming aware of all the different ways one can cook. And um, I hear a lot of people saying in Ireland, oh, for instance, um, how can you cook here? It's so wet, it's always raining. But people don't think you can actually cook outside and eat inside. Okay. <laughs> huh?
Hi, I'm Patrick O'Sullivan, I'm the captain of the Wild Geese team. Uh, we're after coming all the way from Limerick in Ireland and we're delighted to participate in this year's Jack Daniels. It's a great honour for us to be invited. Um, it means a lot, a lot to us to come over here to participate because here in Lynchburg it's really the, the mecca for barbecuers and uh, barbecuing kings and we, j we just wanted to be here to participate and give you a flavour of some Irish cooking. So on our team we have, first of all, we've a guy all the way from Galway. He's Jerry the Rib Dillon. Come on in, Jerry. Thanks, partner. Hello, everyone. <laughs> what does Jerry do when he's not cooking ribs? Uh, Jerry builds houses in Galway and schools and churches and things like that. Cool. But okay. most of my time is spent cooking with this man here. <laughs> okay. Uh, next, we have Tara pulling poor cardigan. <laughs> all the way, all the way from Castle Connell. County Limerick, yeah. I am with Pat, uh, Patrick and the other guys. We are very heavily involved in the Riverfest in our, in Limerick, which is the world's uh, largest international barbecue. It takes part every May Bank Holiday weekend in Limerick, and uh, we're you know we boast up to up to a hundred teams from all around the world take part, and um, we. We're here now to try and promote that as well, and we've got our flyers and all our information about it. You can check it all out on riverfeast.ie. That's riverfeast.ie, and all the information is there about that. You can sample you it for yourself. Your when I'm not cooking barbecue, I'm event coordinating and graphic designing. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, next on the team is the infamous <laughs> Eamon the Goose, Dylan. And the top of the morning, yes, sir. <laughs> How are you, Patrick? Good. You're looking well. <laughs> Eamon is here. He's um, his speciality really is the home cooking from from the homeland. And being the wild geese, he's doing a, a goose, a ten ten pound, twelve pound goose. Well, we're going to find out shortly whether I'm doing the goose or the goose is doing me. <laughs> All right, now turn it over. Okay. Now we're going to hand you over here to Eamon, who's going to talk you through. Um, what he's done to the goose and how he's prepared it for this, this year's competition. 